I like reading a book where I have the sense that the author knows everything. They might not be telling me everything, but you have that confidence that the author really knows everything. This is what I mean about pace. I have to know exactly, even though the reader might not know when, when everything happens. So you have the month that it's happening, so I'm getting the weather right and everything. I reckon I'm, I must have got through 15 different alternative chapters, but one. The reasons for which I discarded each of them were they all gave too much away. I stopped pretending to myself that I was anything other than what I was and began to direct all my energy into finishing the only work that mattered to me. I wasn't someone with an enormous amount of, in fact, I'd say I was someone with not much self-belief at all. And yet in this one thing in my life, I believed. That was the one thing in my life I felt I can tell a story. Um, I often get asked by, by um, younger readers what I would advise if you want to be a writer. This is the way I did it, so that's the only advice I can give. You've got to read as much as you possibly can, because that's the best way to recognise good writing and to learn what makes bad writing, and those are very good things. You'll probably go through a phase where you imitate your favourite writers, that's perfectly okay, that's another learning process. You resign yourself to writing lots and lots of rubbish. You've just got to write that out of your system, and sooner or later you'll hit what, what you know you really should be doing and what is your genre. And perseverance, you've got to persevere, because it a, it's a, a career with a lot of knockbacks, but the rewards are huge. I don't mean in the sense that if that's what you really want to do, to be able to do it lifelong is the best thing in the world. Very re rewarding. But it's not a career for people who are easily discouraged, that's for sure. And to their parents, um, don't tell them it's unrealistic. Never, never say that. Because even if they're not published, writing, well, writing is the passion of my life. Five years, this mass of material was generated, some of which will never find its way into the book, will never need to be in the books. It's, it's just stuff I need to know for my own pleasure, partly for my own pleasure and partly because I like reading a book where I have the sense that the author knows everything. They might not be telling me everything, but you have that confidence that the author really knows everything. Okay, so this is, um, to the untrained eye, might look like a pile of waste paper, but um, <laughs> this is ten years' work. As you can see, I file meticulously, and I know where every single piece of paper is. <coughs> I've dragged out a few bits and pieces. So this is the name of everyone in Harry's year, and all these little symbols mean what house they're in, how magical they are what their parentage is because I needed this later for the Death Eaters and so on and the various allegiances that would be set up within the school. I like this. This was age, This was 98 and this was me trying to find words for the Dementors. So I have all these Latin words written all over the inside of my diary. I used to cover just about anything with, with writing as you can see. This is my application for housing benefit in 28 Gardens Crescent which is where I the first place I lived, obviously, when I was in Edinburgh. Um, treated with a complete lack of respect by me. Discarded first chapters of book one. I reckon I'm, I must have got through 15 different alternative chapters of book one. The reasons for which I discarded each of them were they all gave too much away. And in fact, if you put all those discarded first chapters together, almost the whole plot is explained. Now this would be a grid. This is the grid of the, for the book that I'm working on at the moment, but we don't want to go too close on this because this gives stuff away. All right, but I've without being able, that. no, no one can read that <laughs> that far away, but tell us what each column is in. So, um, this is what I mean about pace. I have to know exactly, even though the reader might not know when, when everything happens, so you have the month that it's happening, so I'm getting the weather right and everything. The chapter title, some of them still to be decided. And, oh dear, I don't think about. anybody can see. This is, this is one, one strand of the story, the, the kind of stuff that has to happen in each chapter. And on the back you have more, more lines for other subplots, so you know what's going on. But as you, you see what I mean, I, I have to fill in some of this as I go, because as I'm writing, it occurs to me how and when things will have to happen. So this is one year? Uh, it's yeah, one, it's one year in Harry's, in Harry's life, yeah. I wouldn't say that I based any of these women on specific women that, that I knew, but Hermione is an exaggeration of me. So Hermione really did come from a, a very deep place inside me. I was very insecure 
Um, still am quite insecure in a lot of ways, but I was a very insecure person for longer than I like to admit. And I think writing about the time in Hermione's life that I write about, growing from childhood into womanhood, literally, because she, when we finish the book, she's 18. I think it brought back to me how very difficult it is. So much is expected of you as you become a woman, and often you are asked to sacrifice parts of you in becoming a girl, I would say. Hermione doesn't. She doesn't play the game, if you like. But do you find the whole secrecy issue, the need for secrecy, a bit ridiculous? Uh, no. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no, not at all, because I... Um, but a lot of it comes from me. Really? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, of course one could be cynical, and I'm sure you would be disposed to be so, and say it was a marketing ploy. But I, I don't want the kids to know what's coming, because that's part of the excitement of the story. And having, you know, sweated blood to create all my red herrings and lay all my clues, to me it's not a... This is my, this is, I was going to say this is my life, it's not my life, but it is a very important part of my life. Yeah. We've mentioned teenagers several times. Yeah. Same thing is true with Harry Potter. What is it about teenagers? What is, I don't know. I do, do you think it's arrested development in me? Know. I don't know. Well, I do know that you said that your teenage years were not that happy for you. I love, Stephen King said, if you enjoyed being a teenager, there's something really wrong with you. And that made me, that really struck me here. I mean, I, I, I... So a happy teenager could not write a book like this? No. Or like Stephen King? No. No, definitely not. What no, well, it? actually, I think the urge to write often comes from a wish to rearrange reality, the reality ah. you're in. So I've ne I've, I don't think I've ever met a writer. But is it easy to make it a fantasy or to make it a real village that has real to people? To me, there's honestly not much difference. There's truly not much difference, and they're very different kinds of book. But for me... Um, what obsesses me? Morality, mortality, that was... Those two things, most of all. Absolutely. They run through everything exactly. you do. They ran through Harry Potter exactly. completely. They run through this. I probably will never be able to... Mortality very, and morality. very close friend of mine, I finished the book, and the first thing he said to me was, how many people die? <laughs> he knows me so <laughs> well. Because he knows you. Yeah, exactly. But no, to go back to the teenager's point you raise, I think that I am fascinated by people who are on the cusp of adulthood, uh, it's such an interesting time of life. I think most of us would say that we, it's a, it, again, it's another yeah. very formative period yeah. in everyone's life. It's rebellion, life, isn't it? it's Absolutely. unformed. It's but you're also very vulnerable, and these yeah. characters are vulnerable in and their different ways. And looking for identification. Absolutely. And, but also, what is, which is an interesting thing about adolescence, is often much more concerned with the big issues of life than the people in middle age, like me, who are struggling with the minutiae of everyday life. We all get bogged down in that to an extent. They and are concerned with the essence of life, which is relationships and love well, and fear Well, it's and one teenage and... boy asks another in this book, what matters? And the answer is sex and death. And then, as an afterthought, music. Now, yeah. none of the adults characters are having that conversation. This is not... they're worried about... Yeah, the they're worried days. about paying the bills. It is one of the amazing and wonderful things about literature, as about film and music, is it's utterly subjective. Mm. So... It's somebody's that's opinion. That's the point of it. You know, that's the point. Of course, you, work, you move in that world, if you expect to just stand under a shower of perpetual praise, there's something wrong with exactly you. Exactly right. That, you know, you will, you will get criticism. I knew that going in, and the, the funny thing is, I'm not a particularly... Um, I was never a very confident person in there are areas in my life in which I'm very thin-skinned. But not in this area. In this area, I, I think it's right and proper. I should be criticised, and that's that's. And can literature. you learn from it? Yeah, sometimes, absolutely. It it depends. I mean, I there have been reviews that have I've thought, yeah, that's that's fair comment, and I need to take that on board. Oh yeah. Yeah, of course. Failure meant a stripping away of the inessential. I stopped pretending to myself that I was anything other than what I was and began to direct all my energy into finishing the only work that mattered to me. Had I really succeeded at anything else, I might never have found the determination to succeed in the one arena where I believed I truly belonged. I was set free because my greatest fear had been realized and I was still alive and I still had a daughter whom I adored and I had an old typewriter and a big idea.
And so rock bottom became the solid foundation on which I rebuilt my life. You might never fail on the scale I did, but some failure in life is inevitable. It is impossible to live without failing at something, unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you fail by default. <laughs>